Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second class on worship ministry. Uh, let's continue from uh, the bottom of page 43. Uh, we are talking about worship ministry in the local church, uh, the organizational aspect of it, right? the administrative aspect, the organizational aspect of worship ministry. Uh, so we just finished uh, discussing about the seven roles of a worship pastor. Um, and so we'll continue uh, learning about uh, the different roles of the different teams, right? We we'll start off with a worship team members. The role of a, uh, the worship team members um, in any local church worship team. One of the things that we look for is their commitment um, and have a firm commitment to the team to be regular to be, and present whenever required. Um, rehearsal, pre-service prayer, uh, etc., etc. Right. Um, so different church-related events, conferences, uh, meetings. And whatnot. So uh, commitment is a, is a huge thing because that uh, kind of uh, displays their enthusiasm, their cooperation, their availability uh, as a worship team member, and whatnot. Right? Uh, must be open to receive correction and instruction. Um, be submitted to the authority. Uh, everything that we learned in from the David's worship team, First Chronicles twenty five, is kind of what we is also expected uh, here with us. Commitment. Uh, are they open to receive correction, instruction, um, and submit to the authority, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, right? Uh, going to page 44, we learn about rehearsal. Uh, this is a, a it's, it's a huge deal. Every worship team practices and rehearses, right? Um, so very quick question for us. Um, what is the difference between practice and a rehearsal? Anybody? in the notes right there. <laughs> Any idea? Like difference between practice and a rehearsal? See, um, yeah, go ahead. Someone was saying something. Rehearsal is something we do it before doing it on the actual day. That we are coming together and doing a rehearsal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And practicing is something we learn and mm -hmm. tune up our skills for that. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thanks, Rupa. Yeah. Yeah. In a nutshell, that's it's what it is. Uh, like what Rupa shared is uh, the difference between practice and rehearsal is uh, so. Uh, once again, for uh, every Sunday, um, a song list is sent out on a Tuesday, latest by Wednesday, to the worship team, uh, right, to the members of the worship team so with the with the song links, like the YouTube link, uh, you know. And say, okay, hey guys, this, this, these are the five songs that we would do. Actually, let me see if I can. Uh, um, get any of uh, the messages that I would normally send out. So. Okay. So, uh, you know, WhatsApp is the way to go. I, I send out, uh, I, I create a WhatsApp group first. And um, and like this is how, a, a, you know, a message would look. I just put it in the chat section. Um, you know, I send this out, I send a set list out by on a Tuesday or a Wednesday saying, okay, guys, this is, these are the songs, you know, you can see. This is from September 4th, uh, very recently this month. Uh, you know, the song name, the key that we will be doing it, the song in uh, the BPM is uh, the beats per minute, the tempo of the song. Um, so everybody's praying to it. So, and you see every praise, uh, we do three key changes from we start with F major, we go all the way to A major, it's at 103 BPM. Um, and once I've sent the names of the song with the key and then uh, you know like what I've sent for ministry time I mentioned breakthrough in the key of C major the tempo will be at 82 BPM 
uh, and with the song link and they can listen to it and I similarly I send out the song links for every song that is mentioned so they can listen to it so once the song list is sent out um, they start practicing at home personally right in the notes I've mentioned it's mentioned practice is personal and rehearsal is relational okay so practice is personal so uh, you know from Tuesday or Wednesday to Saturday until we meet for rehearsal uh, Saturday usually is when you would meet for rehearsal you have in the four days you sit and learn the song the chords are you you know the structure of the song how many times are they uh, repeating the or singing the chorus uh, you know are they repeating it twice or thrice or four times uh, how many times are they singing the bridge? What are the what is the chord progression for the bridge? Uh, you all kind of uh, not done. Actually, everything is here. It's like very interesting. That most of my books. So I don't know how much of this uh, you know. Uh, so if you can see, what song is this? Okay, or oh, the here is uh, every praise. And I have the flow of the song. Uh, I mean, so everything is penned out basically. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I know you can't see it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then personal time. So you map the song out, the structure of the song, how many times is the verse is being sung, what's the chord progression, what is the rhythmic pattern, uh, and all of that. So this is what uh, you know we expect of our team members to uh, do in their personal time. You practice and you prepare personally you structure the songs etc etc right and then when you meet for rehearsal uh, it's more relational right as mentioned now then usually okay you know hey guys you uh, you know I know I sent the song for forever rain uh, I had originally sent it to them in the key of a major right and everybody practiced in the key of a major for the third song forever rain and then when we met for rehearsal in a studio and I, you know, it is because it's relational. I, would, I communicated with them saying, you know, A major is a little low for me. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, B major would be better. Let's take it up uh, a little higher. And so that's relational, right? So you already learned the parts, no problem. But then now you're rehearsing and you're making all these small tweaks, changes, right? Sometimes you might increase the tempo of the song from 83 to 87, or you might decrease it. Uh, like for breakthrough the ministry time song from 82 we brought it all the way down to 77 because we felt it was a little bit more rushed and the congregation will not be able to sing it all these factors will be taken into consideration during the rehearsal so what you do personally at home uh, in your jam room uh, is practice and what happens together uh, you know in a studio when you meet the team members is what is rehearsal Okay, um, so that is expected of the team member uh, as well. So all of this is a part of an organizational aspect, the way it's organized, the way it's planned uh, of a worship ministry. You know, we're getting more hands on deck kind of thing, right? So uh, some of the things that um, happen or should happen at a rehearsal is uh, praise and worship. The team spends time in God's presence, worshiping in unity. We pray, uh, you know, if there's something that God's put in someone's heart to share, uh, they are welcomed, uh, they are encouraged to teach or share, uh, have a short time of prayer, uh, you know, discussion about the songs and the run through of the entire set list itself. Okay. Uh, uh, some of you are like, it's like, why am I learning about all these things? Uh, you know, I'm not going to be playing any instrument. Or, oh. guys, you just hang in there. Right? <laughs> okay. You might be overseeing a worship ministry. You never know. So, um, well, I wish I could teach all the subject in in person, so we could have uh, could see your faces. It's it's quite fun. Um, but anyways, so that is uh, the rehearsal part of it, the practice uh, and uh, the rehearsal. Right? Uh, Christopher, you uh, yeah, you have a question. Ah uh, yes, Pastor. I I I, I uh, I'm surprised. I wasn't sure. I was I was going to ask the question how this was done. Uh, so basically, what you're saying is that um, uh, you know the um, the vocalist, the bass player, the guitarist, lead guitarist, drummer, they all practice separately. Yes. And uh, then they come together on a Saturday and um, and uh, and meet. So yes. um, I I was actually thinking that it was kind of you know it is really actually a group effort from from the from the beginning itself. Right. Um, 
But do you see any sort of, um, um, you know, challenges with the, you know, uh, for example, the drama, for example, I mean, how does he, how does he, does he actually, uh, how does he practice, is he practicing with the, with the music um, that's going on in the video, uh, for example? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, that I would normally leave it up to them, like the individuals, uh, as in, because they're they're always uh, free to approach me and ask, is like, hey, uh, how do I do this thing and whatnot. But then all the practice happens uh, privately, like individually. They work on their parts. Uh, you know, they the for example, the the guitar, electric guitar. If a song, uh, like say, come alive. Um, it has an like the acoustic guitar intro if you listen to it like jing 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 that's my part so i have to work on it uh, you know before i get to the rehearsal and um, and so yeah that's how it works but challenges are always there christopher as a worship ministry uh, i mean there will be rehearsals where people will come and say it's like oh, i didn't get you know because of work i did not have the time to prepare or practice uh, some they would have not learned or the structure of the song and all of that and um, you know those are the times when i uh, pray and ask god give me grace to be you know gentle and kind. <laughs> uh, but i mean all kidding aside but challenges are there but when the song list is sent out, we expect the team members to spend time, practice, and come prepared for the rehearsal. They have to come prepared for the rehearsal. That's the expectation. Uh, hence, all these charts. You know, uh, even though we've played the song like a hundred times and whatnot, we don't uh, don't be overconfident. Just you know, just make time to prepare because you're, you're talking. We are talking about worshiping God here. Uh, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. So, so just logistically, I mean, just um, just a question uh, at the rehearsal. I mean, because you'll have at least about uh, how many people? Uh, maybe six about sixty. Six. Uh, uh, six. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about the the worship team by itself. It's about really 50, 60 people, right? About fifty people at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So when they come for rehearsal, yeah. um, where, where I just logistically I'm just trying to understand now. Yeah. So do you all meet together, or is it like a uh, meet uh, in separate locations or yeah so uh if you remember i shared the roster right and the last class of how the roster looks where each uh every sunday there's a different individual different team uh rostered or scheduled to lead in worship so not all 50 people will be in one location um so you know there will be two people at different locations at say north or two people leading at east and whatnot uh this is in line uh, with the CIS, the central team, APC Central, where there's a larger congregation, um, everything is a little bit more big, um, and so usually the the size of the team is about six. Um, it's a six member band or a team, so they will meet in a jam room. Sorry, so, so when you when you say that. Uh, uh, so in central, for example, do you all do you all meet in the in the in the in the church? I mean, or uh, in the when you say, was it no. more of a, a online kind of a session that you'll have? Our online kind of session was happening during the pandemic, but uh, <laughs> uh, no. So there are these uh, studios that we rent. Uh, so oh, okay. studios okay. with instruments, uh, you know, that's available uh, where they charge us approximately five hundred rupees per hour, uh, and so we we block it for say three hours uh, or so, and uh, and the church pays for it, and we we meet there for rehearse. Uh, rehearsal and then meet on Sunday uh, as well. So Sunday, another thing is uh, because Sunday morning, this our service at Central starts at 10.30 a.m. Um, the setup team, the sound team and the worship team meets at 8 a.m. Uh, for another time of sound check and a quick run through of the songs. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome to. Uh, I mean, if any of you are in Bangalore, uh, if and you attend Central, you are most welcome to attend, uh, come in at eight o'clock just to see everything that happens, the setup, uh, you know, the sound check and whatnot. So it'll be a, a nice insight, you know, to see everything that happens behind the stage. You're also free to go behind the stage and see how they set up the LED screens, the walls and whatnot. So you're most welcome to do that. So <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Uh, say, did you uh, raise your hands? Uh, was there something that you wanted to add or ask? Uh, you you kind of touched on it. I was going to ask uh, because I've had the opportunity to be in a choir and I've, I have friends who are in choir 
And one of the major problems is you send out the songs, people don't practice. <laughs> they wait till they come for rehearsal and yeah. you kind of start from scratch and you stay longer. So I just wanted to ask from your own experience, how you've yeah. been able to cope and encourage people to practice before yeah. coming for see uh, there's i i can't really mince words here it's it's very frustrating uh i'll put it there. it's uh, it's uh it can get very irritating and frustrating but uh but yeah you keep encouraging them because the thing is it comes down to the individual that they need to understand like for example uh, it, it begins with coming just showing up on time for the rehearsal Right. Um, so if, if in context of the choir member, and I've also you know, had the chance, the privilege to be part of choirs, uh, you know, if say two individuals are laid by say five or 10 minutes, if the two lead vocalists who are leading and the choir is accompanying, if they're late and we're waiting on them and they are laid by say five minutes, uh, my sir would always say it's not just five minutes. It's uh, if it's a 60 member choir, if it's it's five into 60. So we've wasted that much amount of time. Uh, you know, it it starts. It begins from there. You're just being on time, showing. You know, just being diligent, um, faithful to rehearse, to practice, and come. And so we need to keep instilling that. And and as a leader, um, it it has to. We need to model that. We need to be on time. Uh, we need to come prepared with the notes. Uh, you know. And there's this movie called Drumline. I'm not sure if you've seen. It's a very old movie, Drumline. Uh, there's a quote that says, um, "You are late if you're on time. You are on time when you're early." I, I, and and that's that. <laughs> that's my. That's become my philosophy now. I try to be, um, uh, you know, instill that. Uh, I try to model that first myself. Is uh, be early, uh, and yeah. That's what it is. But you keep as as a leader, you keep uh, being an example, and they're hoping that eventually they'll you know get the importance of it. Say so. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Okay. Um. So that's the rehearsal part. Um. The role of the band. Uh. As you know, we've already touched on it, but one of the aspect is um skill, right? Uh. Like we saw in First Chronicles twenty five. Uh. Verse seven, we see that in the David's worship team, all of them were skillful in what they did. Um, right. So, uh, another quick question for us: uh, What's the difference between a talent and a skill? Is um, a talent is more or less a natural endowment or a natural gift. Okay. A skill would either be uh, a talent that has been um, furnished and um, improved upon, or a skill that is actually picked and developed over time. So there's a clear difference between talent and skill. Time. More or less, I could say in 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 a word, maybe in few words, that um, skill is the finished product of a talent, and why talent is kind of like the raw material and needs to be processed into skill. Right. Yeah. I mean, beautifully said. Um, yeah. Nisha also says talent is natural, skill is developed. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean. Uh, it again comes down to the point of you putting in that effort right um um and so i come from uh you know being being in a music college and uh you know where we have students coming in every year uh, you know when i was part of music college and also as a staff there uh, when we have the interviews, uh, we ask them, it's like, why do you want to study music? Why do you want to do a degree in music? You say three, four years of your life to study music. Uh, the classic response we would get from the students uh, is, uh, music is my passion. Uh, and rightly so, in the beginning, it will look like that. Uh, and it, in, in, it's amazing in, uh, how fast that passion kind of fades away, um, you know, because everybody who comes in and applies for a music college, they are naturally 
they are gifted, like as we've mentioned, right? They are talented. But then as soon as they realize, some of them, uh, not all of them, some of them, you know, when they realize that they need to put in an effort and grow uh, and develop in their talent, they don't want to do that. They don't want to put in the clock, you know, the time to develop their skill, um, right? So, uh, and this is something that we, uh, once again, we constantly instill and you can instill in your team members as well to uh, be skillful, to keep de developing. And, and it's very easy in this day and age for us to get outdated. Like in the previous, I mean, in the decades or so, you know, you could wait for, you can get outdated in a year's time, in, in a couple of years' time. Uh, this is talking about my time, uh, you know. Now you get outdated in a day's time, <laughs> uh, right? And so you have to keep upskilling. That's the word that we use uh, in these days, isn't it? Uh, upskill. We need to keep upskilling, keep developing. Uh, don't be satisfied. Don't think, okay, I've done this. I know this. And so we cannot become complacent. Right, and uh, God emphasizes this time and time again. Uh, you know, when God tells uh, tells Moses about the tabernacle, he Moses doesn't just go and choose any some random people. He's like, "All right, guys, you do this." But then it was very specific, isn't it? Uh, choose skillful people, uh, you know, um, who are anointed as well. So, being skillful is is a huge part of uh, a role of a musician in the local church worship team. Um, and that cannot be emphasized uh, enough, right? So it's three things to remember about skill. First is your skill is the gift from God. It starts from big talent, and it is for His glory, um, isn't it, guys? Uh, it's for His glory. Everything that we do, uh, in everything that we, you and I, are gifted in and talented in, um, and then we work on it. Uh, the bottom line and the core of it all is is for his glory um does our skill our talent our gifts does it reflect him uh is should always be the question right uh the bible says about david in psalm 78 verse 72 he, he skillfully led israel right and then initially when saul was troubled uh you know everybody asked okay does do you know anyone who can who's skillful in playing the harp or a musical instrument and david was skillful lad, but remember he was still a shepherd boy right but it was his skill that made him stand before the in the presence of a king isn't it so uh you know it's our skill first of all is not for ourselves that's another thing right uh, it's for it's to be a blessing for people around us and you know, as we minister to him, as we serve God, as we minister to God, uh, you know, it's, your skill is not for yourself. That's, it's, <laughs> and then your skill is for his glory, right? That's the first thing. Um, skill must be developed. Uh, you know, keep upskilling yourself. Um, you know, encourage your team members to keep upskilling uh, in everything that they do. And skill doesn't make worship more acceptable before God. So keeping in the top two points in mind, it is possible because of our fallen nature as human beings, because of the fallen nature of the flesh, uh, it is possible to become arrogant. Right? Uh, you know, it's like, hey, I'm a skilled musician. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, that it is possible for pride to creep in, the spirit of entitlement to creep in, um, you know, this, spirit of arrogance to creep in and and you don't kind of begin to worship skill uh, right uh, i forget who says this uh, you know we've talked about worship so much uh, we have to be very careful not to worship worship <laughs> okay it, um, and so uh, that's very important so skill doesn't make worship more acceptable before god we worship him skillfully because he is worthy, right? And he's given us his gift, and it's, it's, it should be our it's, uh, um, our joy to go before our king and you know and say, you know, I want to do this beautifully because you are worthy of of me putting in 
that extra 10 minutes and listening to the song, detailing it, uh, every small detail, uh, you know, because you are worthy at the end of the day, uh, you know, like that beautiful song says, when the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, uh, right? I bring you more than a song. Um, yeah, this is beautiful, isn't it? So that's one of the things to keep in mind. And um, and so the next section as we go, uh, just very quick pause. Uh, yeah, Christopher, go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor. I actually, it's just a little bit of a personal kind of question, because um, one of the things I've I've noticed, uh, you know, when I've when I've seen when I've heard some of the songs, or rather seen some of the songs, is that um, I think you uh, you personally have uh, over the last um, years, I a few years, uh, uh, started you know uh, getting accomplished in, in multiple instruments. So it's you know. I have seen you playing the bass guitar. I've seen you playing the rhythm guitar, keyboards. I think uh, I'm not sure what this, but I think if I remember correctly, I think you start, maybe you started uh, off in playing the drums. Um, so just wanted to understand, um, uh, you know, what was uh, the kind of underlying reason for it. I mean, are you uh, planning to become a one-man band uh, soon, or <laughs> yeah? No, so. Uh... I'm a drummer. I will always be a drummer. Once a drummer, forever a drummer. <clears throat> uh, then, but the, another thing is, so from my dad's side, mom's side, uh, my uncle, my dad, and they're all musicians. Dad used to play the guitar. Uncle used to play the drums. He was one of my first inspirations to pick up the drumsticks. I think it's something, it's something to do with boys and you know the drums. It's like they see the sticks and the legs and the hands moving. It's like wow, we are all mesmerized and amazed. Um, so started with the drums. There was always a guitar at home, and uh, and I would go to church, see uh, these musicians play. Uh, and then come back home and imitate, uh, you know, I would be playing something on the guitar, I would not know what I'm playing, and then eventually learn, okay, that's the D major chord, or oh, that's the C major chord. Um, because it was there, and uh, when I chose to do my studies in music, I wanted to learn an instrument formally, because uh, I was not formally trained until then, it was in 2009. Um, so I chose piano. Uh, it was a nightmare to learn a new <laughs> instrument, um, but I wanted to be trained formally. And uh, if you can play the acoustic guitar, you can kind of play the bass guitar a little bit because you know the notes and whatnot. Uh, but that's the thing, as in when I say I I like music, I love music. It's not uh, I I really do. <laughs> I like uh, it's something about the sound. Uh, it it does something to my body. There's something my body responds very differently to a good sound um, i can talk about acoustic guitars all day and so <laughs> you would be bored uh you know and something about the raw sound of it to imagine uh the wood it was a tree a moment ago now it looks like this and uh you know and the engineering behind it the thought process behind bending the wood placing the sound hole using a certain strings um, and finally for it to produce that sound, I'm like, wow. Um, and so it's just my uh, interest, really my passion um, that made me venture, I just explore the sounds of it. Uh, it all began there, not to learn an instrument, but I wanted to explore the sound of each instrument and then got hooked onto it. So I'm not planning to become a one band band. Uh, it's, yeah, so that's, uh, Thanks, uh, Christopher. Um, and it did not come easy. Uh, I'll just put that as a side note. Um, it did not come easy, as most of you have mentioned. Uh, when I was studying piano as my main instrument, uh, and when you're surrounded by students who are studying music, and all we talk about music is day and you know is day in and day out. We're only talking about music. And I, I think I was sharing it with some of the students in Bible college in person is uh, some of them would practice for, you know, we would have classes from 8.30 a.m. in the morning to we would finish classes at 2 p.m. after lunch. And then the students, you know, we would just practice from 3 o'clock all the way to, I don't know, 7 o'clock and whatnot. So six hours practice sometimes, 
four hours, three hours. You just sit and practice, 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 practice. You know, playing C major scale up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, so music did not come easy for me. <laughs> I'd say that uh, you know, even singing, uh, singing harmony, it did not come easy. And I'm not saying this in a proud way or anything. I I practiced and whatnot. Uh, the time and effort was put into it to develop a certain thing. And um, yeah. Uh, encourage uh, you know the team members to do that as well. So because I have to set a, an example, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so page forty-five. Uh, some of the skills of a worship leader that you can expect of when you when you decide to hire a worship pastor, worship leader uh, under your supervision is um, some of the skills to note is uh, effective musical skill. Um, are they uh, efficient um, and proficient in their instrument, right? You know, be it acoustic guitar, be it whichever, right? Do they know their theory? Do they understand music theory? Are they, are they able to read notations if necessary? That's not, you know, um, are they effective, uh, you know, musical skill, organization and preparation, um, organization and preparation, or are they only like, hey, no, I don't need to prepare, you know, I'm just spirit led all the time. <laughs> Uh, what not um, and experience I have to take into consideration their experience um, their um, how they how well they practice their practice patterns leadership ability because uh, worship leading you are leading right there is an element of leadership involved uh, in leadership uh, their relational ability uh, is very crucial why because they are leading the congregation members of the church. Uh, are they relational? Uh, how, how, how well do they relate with the congregation? And it's not a one-way traffic, isn't it? And how well does the congregation relate with the worship leader? Have they, are they relatable? So relational ability, their calling is very important. Um, and um, character, can't underplay that card. Um, the importance of uh, the character and um, the intuition, natural gifting, God's grace. So some of the skills that you can look for. And um, and if you were to ask me, some of the important things that stand out, uh, key things, is uh, the character, uh, non-negotiables, if I may say it. The character, their calling, their musical skill, and um, their uh, um, that experience. Because with their experience comes relation, uh, leadership ability, relational uh, ability, and everything else. Right, um, Harrison, uh, go ahead. You have your have a question. All right, Pastor. Good morning from here. All right. All right um, I have two questions that is just like bugging my head right now. Now, you you made mention of um, you know one being careful of not being arrogant and prideful when you started seeing how skillful you are. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is this, how do you manage this arrogant and prideful people? That's, oh boy, mm. okay. <laughs> that, that's one. Uh -huh. Then secondly, um, how do you manage a leadership that does not have any uh, musical background experience? That is to say, you have um, um, a worship pastor or a music pastor that cannot even play any instrument. Okay, but, so, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, Finish. and um, does not really have musical understanding or the terminologies you know, behind music. So how do you manage you know, this kind of leadership and how do you manage this arrogant and prideful people in the music ministry. Thank you. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, Yo, that's another challenge right there, isn't it? Uh, the challenges are real in worship ministry, guys. <laughs> uh, musicians are the most sensitive people on earth. Uh, uh, I mean, among the artists, uh, you know, the creative people. There are so many creative people painting, painting and dancing and whatnot. So musicians come under the category of arts, uh, artists, isn't it? 
they are very sensitive um um how do you handle them um see there is no um there is no shortcut to correcting them when they have to be corrected pointing out uh you know in love correcting them in uh, in love and whatnot uh, saying, "Hey, that's that that kind of uh, a behavior or an attitude is not ex, uh, is not is not okay with the team." And I want to share a real um, experience that uh, you know. And so, I was eighteen uh, when this happened. Uh, so I was relatively new to the worship team, and so uh, the the guideline of the worship team then was again so you have to come for practice you know on a saturday if you are not if you don't show up for practice you don't play on a sunday morning right this is quite some time ago 17 years ago you think. and so and there was this seasoned musician in the church then um you know he's been with the church for good over a decade uh, a, a drummer a very good drummer and whatnot so um he did not come for the practice on saturday uh, i happened to be there on saturday i was not supposed to play the drums and the pastor asked me to play the drums so for practice i practice so the next sunday i'm ready and um so this person comes and says like okay hey uh you know uh oh you're playing the drums no no i'm playing the drums uh and whatnot so the young guy as i was i was like okay you play the drums i won't want anything to do uh, what else can i say or could i say have a set so yeah please go ahead and play the drums i'm fine absolutely fine with it uh but then the pastor came into the scene uh he said was like hey roshan why are you not playing the drums uh you know this person was not there okay uh, please you know so he made that person get up from the you know the drums seat and then i had to see you can you imagine the awkwardness oh, i was like oh boy it's so awkward uh and um and so this person was very offended very offended uh he uh, and was very bitter about that moment and um and so through the set and this he went back to the soundboard you know there was the soundboard is the mixer thing mixer console uh, through the set, there was, uh, you know, we have these small speakers next to our, you know, the musicians on stage so that we can hear what we are playing. We can hear what the worship leader is singing. That's th 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 those speakers are called monitors. So, you, you know, and through the set, he was increasing the volume, decreasing the volume, increasing the volume, decreasing the volume. He was just messing with us on stage. And I'm not making this up. I don't have a reason for me to make this up. Um, but that was a display or an expression of so many things um, wrong uh, and and so as the pastor or the, or the worship pastor of the church then not me who was then there was an immediate corrective uh, correction um, uh, plan that was that happened is that person was asked to you know be uh, stepped down from the worship team um, and from every other responsibility because that was not acceptable so uh how do you 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 speak with them you, you know you you see an arrogant attitude or a, an attitude of pride and whatnot you address that issue uh at, say a couple of times two times three times uh, for me uh i would do is i would give them three chances uh you know you correct them once you correct them twice you correct them thrice and if it's a recurring um, then I am not going to be apologetic uh, for uh, for doing my job. I am the worship pastor. I have to correct. Um, I, you know, I would give the person chance. But then, even if that person is older to me, or younger to me, or senior to me, or whatnot, um, I'm accountable to Pastor Ashish. Um, so I'm not going to be sorry for doing my job. Saying is like, hey, this is not happening. You need to step down. This behavior or attitude is not happening. And so I would do that. To answer your second question. Um, like, what do I do about a person who's a worship pastor, uh, music pastor, uh, who does not, um, who is not uh, skillful, or who does not know to play an instrument and whatnot? Uh, there's two ways to look at it. Now, if I'm just a team member, um, <laughs> I, I, that that that's up to the senior pastor, isn't it, to make that decision? Uh, as in, 
if we hired them uh, uh you i don't know what i would do like any i'm because i'm thinking as a, just a a team member i would be worried if i would be uh misunderstood or if i if so if i've seen myself as arrogant for example if i go if i go to the worship, the senior pastor of the church and point out and saying uh, hey pastor you know this person is a worship pastor but he doesn't know to play an instrument uh you know or anything about the music um my first fear is will i be misunderstood um you know, sorry yeah this yeah. one now let me maybe let me not use the word you know a worship pastor let me say a music director mm -hmm. that does not know how to play the instruments not even a chord you know from the keyboard right and you don't even know how to separate parts right and you're the music director so how do we can manage this kind of situation so it's more like you know when it is time for whereas are you like you know looking at everybody okay right. and what part is this what part right. is that and right. so on and so forth so yeah. for me now i'm like asking myself you have people you know who can really be in that position and address this thing adequately but because of the fact that okay you're the leader or whatever it is you just have to appoint anybody you, know, you feel like appointing that's mm -hmm. why i loved you know when you said you know there's a need you know for us to have a good system that can make you know uh, worship you know effective so yeah. if at the end of the day things are not placed properly yeah we struggle yeah and by the time you know you start talking whether they misunderstand you or they don't misunderstand you yeah there will always be a problem yes so yeah uh and so communication again yeah, as is key as you mentioned harrison so uh you know if uh i would want to make so if i'm just a team member and if i see that okay uh this leader is not efficient and and the whole group is feeling the impact of it uh because of uh a lack of a skill so to say um i would want to speak with my senior pastor because worship pastor is accountable to the senior pastor and the first thing that i would want to make clear is my intention uh, is my heart uh, is to say that i'm not there to point out uh, a negative of so and so uh and you know it's not to say that that person is bad so i want to make that very clear isn't it uh having having made my intentions clear to the senior pastor then i would you know put across my concern saying okay so pastor, because of so and so because of, you know this lack of this uh, we are not able to follow or understand or whatnot um and so it is a sensitive thing and that's why i'm putting the intentions uh, first and if a person understands and sees your heart your intention for correcting the person or pointing out anything and you say and they see that okay you are for them and not against them so to speak uh, then it becomes a lot easier and so uh, it's the same thing it's the same challenge uh, with most of my team members as well is there are challenges when i have to correct them and whatnot but i don't have to keep teaching telling myself and asking myself the intentions of my heart why am i correcting them am i correcting them because i don't like them personally or am i correcting them genuinely do i is there a genuine interest and care for that person to get better um so once the intentions are clear uh you know uh, everything else becomes easy has so uh, if you are a part of a team member and if you have a leader like that uh have an open conversation with your senior pastor make your intentions very clear uh what it that might help or in and as kennedy is saying or encourage that person to you know take up a training or you know music training or instruments or whatnot uh, that hope that helps thank you yeah you're welcome you thanks kennedy um for that as well yeah um all right, so we spoke about uh, the skills of a worship leader and uh, with the next section here, 
um, as a conclusion, we want to conclude with talking about the character traits of the effective worship leader. Um, right, character trait, because as mentioned, character is one of the skills that are non negotiables. Uh, it's very important. Okay, um, so what are some of the characters? So, in a worship leader, a pastor should be primarily looking for a disciple of Jesus who is strong in character and not simply full of gifting or full of themselves. Um, in other words, who a person is in the secret place of their hearts must be infinitely more important to us than how they play their instrument, sing or function in front of a crowd. Um, holiness goes a long way uh, and, it's a, and it's a big deal, at least for me, uh, how a personal individual is in their quiet time, in their personal time, in the secret and their secret life. Um, we will not necessarily know how their secret life is, uh, but you you keep teaching about it, the importance of it, the significance of it, isn't it? Uh, David was able to kill Goliath in public uh, because he killed a lion and a bear in private when nobody could see. Um, and so what happens in the secret place is very, very important. And that's where the character is shaped. Um, right? There's another an, an old saying that says, you know, anointing will take you up, but it is your character that it will, that will keep you up there. Um, right? So some of the questions, uh, you know, leaders must ask about a worship leader is, um, one, are they humble? Do they have a vibrant secret life with God? Um, we, we, you will know more about their secret life with God when, when you have the personal relationship with them and you ask them to open up. When you've created a culture of vulnerability, right? When they, you know, it's when they are not afraid to, be, uh, you know, uh, when they know that they will not be judged. When I say, you know what, I did not read the word this week. I did not pray enough this week. And and when they realize that they are not going, they are not being judged. When they say that, okay, you didn't read the Bible, it's like, okay, you know, off the team, whatnot. You're creating a culture where they can share freely about what they are going through. Because just because they're part of the worship team, <clears throat> uh, you know, they're not superheroes. They are still humans, uh, isn't it? Shortcomings are there. We need to understand that. And when you get into their life, uh, you begin to see, okay, you know, how God is working in them and through them, right? So, and that, and with that, you'll be able to gauge uh, their secret life with God. Are they able to take direction or correction? Um, are they uh, are the accolades and affirmations of people too uh, too important to them? This is a very important point. Right? But when we learned about the life of Saul and David, Saul was a man of position, while David was a man of presence. When Saul disobeyed, he tells Samuel, "Okay, you know, uh, Samuel, just." Come walk out with me, so that the elders will still see that you know God is with me. He was he just wanted to show the outward appearance of everything is okay. Uh, so do you want a person, someone who's like that, or do you want someone who's after the presence? Are they doing what they do to serve or to gain respect? Are they good husbands or wives, parents, and family members? Are they willing to train others to take over for them? Right? Um, are they skilled at what they do? Um, just the previous point there, are they willing to train others? Uh, that means you're willing to teach, right? Um, it, that, once again, from my personal experience, is it is possible when, when you know that you're very skillful, uh, you know, you can become arrogant to not teach or show or teach others what you know. Uh, because you know, I've put in this effort. Why should I sh share it with you that easily? It's like sharing a recipe. It's like I'm not going to share my secret recipe with you. <laughs> it's, the, it's the family recipe. Uh, uh, but willing to train and teach is a huge uh, expression of humility. Right? It's like, hey, you know, of course, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, yes, yeah, sure. This is how I learned it, and this is how you play this thing. This is how. Uh, you know, you do a certain thing. So willing to train others, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, in, in, in an individual. Are they skilled at what they do? Are they teachable and eager to learn? Uh, are they willing to quietly care for poor as much as they're willing to stand on a stage? Uh, you know, are they, are they only after the stage and the lights and all these fancy things? Or, um, you know, are they willing to just 
be as caring and be as available right are they loving gentle generous uh, you know, do they have a substantial interior life uh, with God that reflects itself in their outward lifestyle? Um, all of these are, you know, some of the things um, for us to, you know, just be mindful of. Yes, Sri Kumar, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Sir, I just want to know. Uh, um, this is something something I heard, uh, which is happening. Um, um, that the the worship leader the the choir groups are you know their mobiles were actually monitored by the worship leaders that uh, how they are how like what kind of sites they are visiting so okay just to just to uh, you know to have a track on them so i just want to know that um, this kind of practice is is good or um, or, or not like no, as a church, when you know, in the church, when you are in the choir group, choir, and you are tracking your um, uh, the members of the the choir group that their mobile, yeah. is it the right thing? I just want to know. Thank you, Pastor. Um, in my opinion, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know, it won't take long for someone to clear their history and go back and watch what they watch. So, but, and also, it's. Uh, it's not just about you know that other individual that they can clear the history and go back home it's not about them it's about me it's about uh i it's, it's not who i am i wouldn't do that that's why i said you know i don't want to uh, police them it's, it seems like that you know so you you teach them you 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 teach them the word of god you encourage them to live a holy life you empower them and then you you leave the rest to them so Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sure. Okay, everyone. Hey, uh, well, thanks for joining in for today's class once again. Um, I hope there was something that you could take away and uh, and learn. Okay, so I'll see you all again next week. Uh, we'll resume with this chapter. Okay. God bless you guys. Have a lovely day ahead and a lovely week ahead. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.